Greetings from the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Oklahoma City. This is the Open Heavens for March 28, 2021. Open Heavens is a daily devotional written by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, our Father in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. We say a happy Sunday to you. We thank the Lord Almighty that we are witnessing the last Sunday in the month of March. We thank you for his faithfulness through the month. And I pray that even as we go into the study of his word today, this word will bless us richly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The title of today is Rejoice Evermore. Rejoice Evermore. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 is the memory verse which says rejoice evermore and Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 9 to 10 is the Bible reading Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 9 to verse 10 and it reads and Nehemiah who was the governor Ezra the priest, priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people this day is only to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. And he said, then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is only to our Lord. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Again, the latter part of that Bible reading is telling us not to sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that is why the title for today is Rejoice Evermore. And why do we need to rejoice evermore? Because discouragement... It's a major weapon that the devil uses to ruin people's destinies. And because we don't want our destinies to be ruined, one of the things we need to do is to rejoice. Because that's the plan of the enemy, to use discouragement to destroy people. And when one allows, you know, the opposite of, um, you can say rejoicing, could be sadness or sorrow. And when one allows sadness into one's life, just like we mentioned earlier that discouragement can be used, you know, to ruin people's destiny. When one allows sadness in someone's life, it actually, actually hinder, you know, the achievement of the goals that they are set to achieve in their lives. So, discouragement can ruin destiny and sadness also can affect one's achievements of their life's goals. So, in all of this already, we see that we can't, we, we just have to make sure we are rejoicing. If you want to live a fulfilled life, if you want to fulfill purpose, if you want to fulfill destiny, if you want to achieve our goals in life, rejoicing is very important. Our daddy Lord is using Elijah as a case study. And there was a particular point in time for Elijah when discouragement set in. To the point that even Elijah was asking, that God should take his life. So you can see that level of discouragement that Elijah faced. And first Kings chapter 19, verse 7, the angel of the Lord came to him and touched him open a second time and told him, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for thee. Now, for Elijah, because of the discouragement that he was beginning to feel, it got to a point in time when the, the journey became too tough for him. And why did this was a man that was able to call down fire? But it got to a point in time because discouragement set in, it also affected the way his life's journey was beginning to pan out. It now became too tough for him. So that's another lesson we can learn here too. If we allow discouragement to set in, even the life's journey that God has set before us can become more difficult and difficult. And that is why we need joy so that we can also walk through and run through and race through this right journey with joy in our hearts. And our daddy has an important prayer for us. Even 
concerning what we have learned concerning Elijah. He said, may you never lose your joy in Jesus' name. And we say a big amen to that. Even a music minister, you know, recently sang a song that, you know, joy is a fetcher. Never lose your joy because with joy, you draw from the wells of salvation. So all of this is going to prove the fact that this joy is very important for us to have in our lives. Because with even for the Bible reading that we read, we can see that they were supposed to build the wall. We still goes back to even our own life's journey. What are the walls that we are supposed to build? You know, we can equate the people in the time of Nehemiah as they were trying to rebuild the wall as okay, what is our own life's journey? What is our own life's purpose? If they have allowed weeping and mourning and sadness to set in, they will not have had the strength to build that wall. So that is another reason why Nehemiah was encouraging them that um, don't lose your joy. The joy of, of the Lord is your strength. So in the same way too, what is ahead of us? What is this task ahead of us? What is the journey ahead of us? What is the what thing that represents building a wall in our life? What is our life's purpose? We, if we don't have joy, we may not, we will not have the strength to finish that which God has said before us. And a lot of things that cause us what, um, to lose our joy are problems, challenges, situations. The truth of the matter is that you might, even all of these things, when we worry about them, we can't make any change anyways. Worry does not change anything. That is another reason why we need to have this joy in our hearts all the time. Another disadvantage of, this, uh, of, of, of losing our joy when we are discouraged, when we lack joy, when we are mourning, when we are weeping, is the fact that it can actually also dry up our bones. Now, dry up in the bones in this case was what was referenced you know, earlier in the teaching of today in Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22 about the fact that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dried up the bones. Which means that when we lose our joy, this drying of bones, we can equate it to sicknesses and diseases. So even lack of joy can lead to sicknesses and diseases. Whereas when we rejoice forevermore, that is a secret to long life. So we can see in all of this, there, there are so many benefits of you and I rejoicing forevermore. So let us allow situations, let us allow circumstances, let us not allow, not allow things that have not gone the way we want to rob us of our joy. The commandment here is rejoice evermore. It did not say rejoice only in the good times. It did not say rejoice only when things go according to plan. Whether things go according to plan, whether there's a delay, whether there's a denial, whatever it is, let us not lose our joy because in due time, God will grant us what we request of Him. So let us not be gloomy. Let us not be sad. And choose joy today. That's the final admonition of our final Lord. Choose the joy of the Lord today so that you can run and you can receive strength for the journey ahead. We can finish this journey ahead without the joy of the Lord. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The action point is that cast all your cares on Jesus today and rejoice, singing and dancing as you go through today. Father, we thank you, O God, for this commandment of rejoicing forevermore. Lord, all those things that want to rob us of our joy, Father, all our cares, all our worries, all the disappointments, Father, we pray we cast them unto you, O Lord, today. And Father, we pray that, Lord, we will rejoice in you, no matter the circumstance and situation, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. We hope you have a joyful day. Thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow by God's grace.